Hi, and welcome again. This is a MACD trading strategy published online and claiming 80% win rate. So I thought this might be the perfect candidate for a systematic trading experiment. In this video, we will copy the strategy rules in Python and backtest it on historical data. Hopefully we will get the attractive 80% as a result. The Python code we will use in this video is available for download from the link in the description below so you can download it and use it for your experiments as well. The strategy uses a 200 exponential moving average to detect the trend. If the candles are trading above the curve of the EMA, then we have an uptrend and we only consider long positions. In the opposite scenario where candles are trading below the curve of the moving average, we have a downtrend and we only look for short positions. The entry signal is triggered by the MACD. When the MACD curve, which is the blue line here, crosses above the red signal curve, and this occurs when both curves are below the zero line, then we have a long entry signal. In the opposite case, when the MACD line crosses below the signal line, and both lines are above the zero line of the histogram, then we have a short entry signal. If you are not familiar with the MACD, quick recap. The blue line here is called the MACD line. It's basically a fast moving average. The signal line in orange is a slower moving average. And the histogram is the difference between the two moving averages. So basically, the difference between these two MACD line and the signal line. Then we have the zero line that separates positive positive and negative values of the histogram. Again, a short signal happens when the fast curve crosses below the slow curve, and this happens above the zero line of the histogram. And a long signal is when the fast curve crosses above the slow curve, when both curves are below the zero line. We will write the strategy in Python and backtest it on historical data. We will use a 15 minutes time frame for this video. If you are interested in this type of strategies, you can also try it on different time frames. Then I will show you how we can apply a quick forward testing approach where we optimize the parameters on a slice of data and then we test on the future or unseen data. And by unseen, I mean unseen by the model or the strategy. And we can repeat this forward testing approach to get a better estimation of the strategy's performance. Okay, now we can start the coding part. This is our Python Jupyter Notebook. We are loading the data using pandas read underscore CSV. I'm using the Urias dollar data. 15 minutes time frame for almost one year of data. So 2023 up to 2024. Then we're cleaning the GMT time fractions of seconds. These are not needed. And we're casting the GMT time column to date time in case needed later on, providing the correct format and filtering data or the candles where we don't have any movement. So basically no volume. And this is where the high is equal to the low. So these are days off, holidays and so on. And then we're setting the index to GMT time. Here we're adding the indicators. I'm adding the uh, exponential moving average length 200, just as we've described in the previous section of this video. I'm adding the MACD as well. So we have three different components of the MACD. We have the first component, which is the MACD line, with the fast moving average. Then we have the MACD signal, which is the slower moving average. And then we have the histogram, which is basically the difference between these two moving averages. Then I'm also computing the ATR, the average true range, which is an indicator of the volatility of the market. This might be needed later on when we are backtesting a strategy to set our stop loss distance and the uh, take profit distance as well. Now we can define a function called EMA underscore signal. This function basically will test if we have consecutive candles that are trading above or below the moving average. We're not only testing for one candle, the current candle, if it's above or below the EMA curve, we're testing for a list or subsequent candles that are preceding the current candle because we need to confirm the signal. We need to confirm that we have at least, let's say, five or 10 candles that are all trading above the EMA curve. Otherwise, we don't validate the trend signal. And this is done right here. So if all the relevant rows high is below the relevant rows EMA, so relevant rows is a slice of the data frame that goes from start to end. Start is the current candle minus the back candles. So minus seven, for example, or 10 and so on. This is the uh, input parameter here. And the end is the current candle excluded. Remember that Python will be um, excluding the end uh, index right here. 
by default. So if all the highs of the relevant rows are below the moving average curve, then we are in a downtrend and we're looking for a short position. This is where the EMA signal is equal to one. So we're going to return one from this function. In the opposite case, where all the candles are trading above the EMA curve. So we're taking the lowest values of each of these candles. If all of these lowest candles are trading above the EMA curve, then we return two because we are in an uptrend. This is a bullish signal or a bullish trend. In any other case, we return zero. So I'm running this on 20,000 candles or 20,000 rows for now, just to make short, because anyway, we have 18,000 in our data frame. We don't have any more. It would be good to download more data instead of starting from 2023 maybe starting from 2020 this way we could have at least four years of data to test our strategy or the macd indicator anyway this should take around 24 seconds in the meantime we can continue so the second function we're going to use is the total signal so this function uses the previous function it's going to use the ma signal so in case we are in an uptrend ma signal is equal to two using the back candles the current candle and the data frame and at the same time, if all the um, current candle minus three up to the current candle minus two, this means since we're using the lock, the upper edge here is included by Python. So this is an edge case. So we're taking two consecutive candles, minus three, current candle minus three, and current candle minus two. If the MACD for both of these is below the... Uh, current candle minus three up to current candle minus two macd signal and then right after these two candles where the macd was trading below the signal curve and right after we have the current candle minus one up to the current candle so the current candle and the previous candles macd becomes above the uh, macd signal for these two candles then in this case we return two because we have this macd curve crossing from below to above the uh, MACD signal for the last two candles. So in brief here, we're taking, in these two conditions, we're taking the last four candles, including the current candle. If the first two of these, we had the MACD below the MACD signal, and then the last two, which is the current candle and the previous one, we have a switch or a crossover where the MACD becomes above the MACD signal, then we are crossing, and this is an indicator of a bullish signal. So we return to. Notice that we have omitted the uh, condition where this should happen below the zero line. We're going to add it later on in this video. But the problem I noticed is that if we add too many conditions, we will end up with zero trades, with zero signals. So this is the correct way to do it for now. We're going to test it and see if we can add additional some additional conditions. Then we have the opposite condition where we have an EMA signal equal to one. So we are in a bearish market and here we have the opposite crossover. So if the first two candles MACD is above the MACD signal, and then for the last two, the current candle and the previous one, it crosses below the uh, MACD signal, we are switching into a bearish signal and we return one. In any other case, we return zero. We're going to run this and save it as a new column in our data frame as total signal. So I'm going to run this. It should take around a minute. And I'm checking where in the data frame we have a total signal different than zero. And we have around 119 rows. So this is 119 signals over around 18,000 rows. So that's not much, but at least we have over 100 signals. Now let's try and add the uh, positive and negative above the zero line and below the zero line conditions here in the uh, total signal function. So we can add um, this condition, all of the current candle minus one and the current candle. So the last two candles MACD values are negative. So they are below zero and here they are above zero. So if the crossover happens below the zero line, we have a bullish condition, a bullish signal. If it happens above the uh, positive line or above the zero line, we have a return one. So this is a bearish condition. Let's try to run it again and see if it influences the number of the signals we are getting. Okay, and now this immediately wiped out all of our signals. I'm going to change it instead of testing the last two candles and they have to have both the MACD above or below the zero line. I'm just going to restrict this to the last candle, just one candle. If the MACD is a positive or negative, then we're generating a signal. So here, instead of 
using this part, I'm going to current candle on its own with a MACD. This is what should be positive. And up here, we're trying to remove this all and we're going to locate the um, current candle on its own and the MACD should be negative. And now we we have our signal and we have only one signal for the whole year. So that's not going to do a trading system. This is why uh, these conditions, when put together on this time frame, on the 15 minutes time frame, they don't generate signals. It's too many conditions. It's filtering basically everything and we're not getting any trades. Now we can try and plot this signal at least to check if it's a real signal. It's happening at candle 15,000 purple point that we can see here. And it's not even a very good signal. Actually, we have a small downtrend, a small retracement down after the signal. But we do have an uptrend afterwards, but I don't think it's related to, to the signal. Okay, at this point, if we want to use all the conditions as described by the published strategy, we need to find a way to make more signals. I'm going to use the five minutes time frame instead and try it out to see if it works or it generates more signals. So we're generating the EMA signal. I'm going to generate the uh, total signal as well for now. Okay, trying a, the uh, total signal. And if we plot this, so uh, we also have zero signals here. So we have no other choice but to eliminate this part. If you think you have a different way, please leave a comment. Um, really curious about how to make more signals out of this. If you have any idea, if you've been using the MACD before, I haven't used the MACD a lot in my trading. So this is probably one of the few times I'm relying on this indicator. But if you have a clearer idea and you know what should be done, and if you have a MACD strategy that you would like to test, please drop a comment very quickly. I'll make sure that we can discuss this before we decide if it's worth a backtest experiment. Okay, now let's revert back to our 15 minutes, the previous data, eliminate these lines, these conditions. And now when the EMA signal is done, we can run this again and we will proceed with our backtest. In this way, we would be backtesting the MACD crossover coupled with the EMA signal, the EMA 200 to detect the trend. So back to our signals, I'm going to visualize these. We can visualize, for example, uh, the first set. So it's around 416 of index. Let's try to start at 400 or 380, for example. And we should be seeing here, I'm going to increase the size of the purple points so 15. We get one signal here, that's a bearish signal. And we see that we have a downtrend afterwards. So it's working well for the signal. Let's check another one. So 963, I'm going to start at 900. And we can see that we have a bullish signal, which is a false signal because we didn't have an increase in the price later on. Let's try one more. So 1,266, I'm going to try 1,200. And here we have a few signals. So this one is bullish. It, the price did go up slightly. This one is bullish, the price didn't go up. This one is bearish, but the price did go down. This one is bearish and the price did go down. So there's something into this. I mean, it's showing sometimes that it's predicting the short movement of the price. Basically, it's two crossing, two moving averages, actually. We need to bear in mind that it's kind of lagging. It will only catch a trend or a retracement once this is already started, once this movement already started. But anyway, we can optimize the stop loss and take profits. If we run the optimization on the whole data set, because here I've taken the whole slice of the data frame, so I didn't really slice a small part of it. We need to check what's the maximum and the best performance in terms of returns. What's the potential of this indicator? So we're not going to use it this way. This is not our test. It's not our forward test. We're just optimizing to see with the best possible parameters of stop loss and take profit stop loss ratio, how much can we have in return? How much can we get in return? Okay, so the optimization on the whole data frame is finished and we have around 20% in return. So this is the maximum we could expect from this strategy. Let me check. It's around 18,000 candles and we're talking about the 15 minutes time frame. So if we do the math, it's around 18,000 times 15 minutes divided by 60 divided by 24. It's around 187 days. So uh, divided by 30, six months enough so 
around 40% per year. This is the maximum you could expect of it in the best possible case and the best parameters. Now we can make the heat map of these parameters. So this is how it looks like. And it's honestly, it's very bad. It's really bad. It's all in negative. This is good because it shows the contrast with the previous strategy using the Bollinger Band uh, that I've been publishing for the last two or three videos. And we've deployed a live trading bot on the market using that strategy where everything was basically in positive. So this is how you can compare indicators together. In this case, the EMA coupled with the MACD, the way we've done it is is very bad. It, it wouldn't lead to any profits. Anytime you have slightly different parameters deviating from this zone, this cluster of slightly positive returns here, we're going to fall immediately in the negative and the losing a set of parameters. So um, I just wanted to show you this to show you that we, we're not expecting this to be a good strategy because the indicator is not working well. So what we will do now is to slice a small part of the data. So from the 18,000 rows, I'm taking the first 10,000 rows. This is the optimization, and this is only to extract the stop loss distance, stop loss coefficient, and take profit stop loss ratios. Okay, so the optimization is done. We have 18% in return on the optimized uh, parameters. The parameters are the following 2.3 and 1.6. Let's check the uh, the heat map again on these. So this is slightly better because the cluster here is a bit wider in terms of positive returns, but it's nothing very impressive. Okay, now we can test it on the rest of the data. Now we're going to slice from 10,000 until the end of the data frame. We're going to call it data frame test in this case and data frame test in here and the parameters will be the best parameters that we have found here. So that's 2.3, 1.6, and we're using 2.3 and 1.6. So this is a forward testing because you, we're using this in the future, Yeah, the slice that we have been fitting our model on. In returns, we have only 2%. And uh, remember, we're not using commissions because we're basically just testing the indicator here. We're not testing the full strategy. The trade management here, take profit, stop loss, is just to mimic a small strategy that we can, that would allow us to basically to test if the indicators are working well. And um, it's not the case, to be honest, in this um, strategy for this set of indicators. We can include the RSI. I'm using an RSI of length, let's say um, two. Just we will use it to exit the strategy. If we have a trade and we have a long trade and the RSI climbs above 90, we're closing the trade, even if we didn't reach the take profit value. Same thing for the short. If we drop below 10 in the RSI, we're going to close the trade if it's a short position. 5% in return, 5.6, it's a small improvement versus the previous 2%. It's, it's a lot of drawdowns, not so many trades, and it doesn't really look like a good strategy that you would put your money on. And if we take a look at the other uh, parameters, it's true, this is 61% as a win rate. It's a high win rate but it's not bringing a lot of money. And the only reason the win rate is high is because we've used the RSI. So if I comment this part again, we just get around 41% of win rate. Okay, so I will stop here for this video, but the uh, MACD issue is not done. If you have any remarks or any improvements that you want to suggest, please drop a comment. I'm waiting for this. I'm eager to know how the people published this strategy they made a lot of signals. Well, they tested it manually. So this is this is a big difference between what we are doing on this channel. So I'm counting on you on this one. I'll leave the, uh, the link for the code. If you want to download it, the data file as well, download these, uh, make your own experiments. Let me know in the comments section. Hopefully we'll make it through and make this work. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying that long. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.